This is the Amsynth 171 quad switch. It is based on a Roland 100M module that had four electronic switches in it. To those four switches, a clock and circuitry to be able to enable each of these in sequence has been added. So we're going to be looking at some of the uses of this AmSense 171 quad sequential switch and the first thing we've got to do is install it. Now this section of my System 55 I filled up with functionality that I identified was missing in my five missing features video. I'll link to that right up here. This module in the Roland System 100 series is a voice module that didn't have anything to do with those missing features but it fit in well with the other System 100 modules and it provided some nice functionality. So we're going to take that out. I've already removed the screws and we're going to take this AmSense 171 and place it right here in my System 55 because we'll have all the other resources with which to test this module. So let's take a little bit more detailed look at this AM8171 quad sequential gate. We're going to look at the details of the inputs, outputs, and controls. First we've got the gate itself and there are four identical ones and as mentioned previously we have the sequential clock section. The gate has an input that can be either audio or control voltage. It has an output and that output is routed to the mixer as well. You have a control input to turn on the gate. This is a positive control. This is a negative control. Finally you have three modes you can have the gate on all the time and you see the status indicator. You can have it under external control from here or you can have it under sequential control. Now let's look at the sequential clock. You have a clock out, you have a rate, you have a number of steps which can be four, three, or two. You have a stop run and you have a step. You can also have an external clock out and then finally there's a mix out when you're using it as a sequential switch and a level associated with that. So that's a quick overview of the details of the controls and inputs and outputs. Next we'll look at some of the use cases. Our first use case is just using a single gate. It's going to be gated on and off by this 921 oscillator and I've got the level down so that it's not triggering right now. Our audio source will be a white noise source and it's going into the input of this second gate and the output is going around here into this attenuator. That's our output to the mixer. So when we turn up this level of the 921 and set the control to external which is the center position we can hear it gated on and off and again in the top position it's always on and in the bottom position it will be under the control of this clock and sequential controller so that's the first use case. For our next use case we're going to use two of these gates and we're going to use the sequential clock to alternate between them. For our inputs we're using two oscillators. One is coming from here and the other is coming from here. And we're going to put them under sequential control so that we can toggle between them using the sequential clock. That's as fast as this will go. If we slow this down, it will get to the point where it's using 25 seconds at each gate, which is quite a slow clock. 
and we'll cut that off and we can use this to manually step. So the next thing we're going to do is introduce an external clock, the 921. And we're using a pulse output. We've got the rectangular width set all the way counterclockwise. And what we want to do is drive this up into the audio range. And we're going to add one other wrinkle. Since we're using this pulse wave output, we're going to modulate the pulse width from this LFO and it's going through an attenuator And the amount of modulation is a pretty sensitive parameter, so we're going to modulate the amount. So we brought in the Arturia beat step, and we're taking the clock out of that. And the clock is going to be our source for modulating the pulse width on this 921 oscillator. And this 921 oscillator output is the clock for the AM8171 quad sequential switch. And here are the inputs to the quad sequential switch. We have oscillator one and oscillator two. We've got it set to two steps and we're going to put these into sequence control so that we're alternating between them at audio rates. And we change to three steps and to four steps. And now let's modulate the pulse width from this clock. And that's use case two. The third and final use case for the AM8171 quad sequential switch is to use it as what's commonly called an event sequencer. So we've got four different audio inputs, each of which is doing something different. And we'll listen to those. And what we're going to do is use a sequential clock to move from one input to the next. And of course, all the outputs will be mixed and that's what we'll be listening to. Let's put this back into sequential mode. So that's the demo. Of course, you could also have different LFOs or envelopes or any kind of control signal going through here so that you're alternating between various different control signals and sending that to something like pitch to do some odd modulation or filter cutoff or pulse width. In any case, I really like this module. I'm 
very glad to get it. It's much like the ARP 2500 mix sequencer, except with only four channels instead of eight. It also takes up a smaller footprint, and it goes nicely with the System 100 module look and feel. So thanks for watching to the end of this video. Please consider liking and subscribing.